So if there's one area of WordPress customization that gets sort of brought up quite a lot is how can you customize a lot of the WooCommerce pages? Now I've covered a lot of different customization options on this channel. And I'll put a link in the description below so you can take a look at some of those and you can follow along. In this one, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own custom loop and then use that as part of the archive. The benefit of this is that you can basically use any of the tools at your disposal to create any kind of layout that you want and then create your own customized loop from it. So we're gonna use two plugins today for this. We're gonna be using Elemental Pro because we need to use the theme builder and we're gonna be using Ellie or Elemental Custom Skin. Now we are gonna use the free version in this, but I will be covering the pro version in a separate video that will show you some of the things that are brought to the table with the pro version, some of the nice layout options, some of the extra features we have. However, for this one, we're using Elemental Pro and the free version of Elemental Custom Skin. So let's just dive in and I'm gonna show you how you can create something similar to this. Now, while this is a really simple example, as you can see, pretty much the same kind of thing you'd expect to see as a normal loop as part of WooCommerce. However, this is being created directly inside Elemental Pro using Ellie Custom Skin. So we can customize this in any way we want. So you can see I've got a hover effect that gives us an outline, turns the background of the image or turns the image to a black and white. We've got the name of the image, the brief description, the price, and an add to basket option. Now, obviously you could go way beyond this. This is just a case of showing you how to do it, giving you the tools that you need. Then it's up to you what you do with it. You can run as far as you want with it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take over to the dashboard now and we're gonna take a look at how we start to set something like this up and just show you the fundamental skills and the tools that you need to use to be able to create your own custom loop for WooCommerce. Now, when you install Elemental Custom Skin, you get a couple of extra options that are part of your copy of Elemental. Specifically, if we take a look at the template section and jump into the theme builder, which is where we are right now, you can see that we've got a new tab called Loop. And this just allows us to create an individual template for any of those loop items. Now, if you're unsure what I'm talking about, let me just jump back onto the example page. You can see an individual product in the archive displays the, the image, the title, a brief description, the price, and the add to basket and quantity. That is one single item inside the loop. So the loop currently is showing us six of those individual items. So that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna create the template for this individual item that will then be called up and created as part of the loop. So inside here, inside the theme builder, under the loop section, we're gonna say add new. What we're going to do is give this a name, making sure that the type is set to loop, and we're going to call this default product loop, and we'll say create template. Once we've done that, that'll take us into Elementor. We can go into the editor like you normally expect, and as you can see, we first of all, we're brought into the library where we could choose any of the predefined templates. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to close this down. We're going to start from scratch. First thing I'm going to do is just come into the settings and I'm going to come into the option for the page layout and we're going to set this to Elemental Canvas. And this doesn't really have any effect on what we're doing other than the fact it gives us a blank slate, a clean slate to work with where we don't have distractions like headers and footers and anything else that may be part of our design. Underneath that, we've got the preview settings. Now, currently this is set as blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that and we're going to come into product. So what we're saying is we want to use this to preview the actual layer that we're gonna work on. And this is just more of a visual thing than anything. Come in there and we say all, we wanna change that and we're gonna call this, we're just gonna go and search for the beanie. So I'll type that in and we say beanie with logo, apply and preview. Now obviously there's nothing to preview at the moment, but it just means now we start to build this up, we'll see different elements on the screen to just make the whole process a lot easier. So we're gonna keep this example fairly simple, but like I said, the technique is more important than the actual execution that we're gonna see right now. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drag and drop the featured image, which is gonna pull in the product image. Now, before I do that, let me just quickly explain that even though WooCommerce is a separate plugin and we have products as a separate section, they're still just a post type in WordPress. WordPress just treats them as a custom post type. So we can still reference things like featured image, post excerpt, title, and so on, even though it relates to a product as part of WooCommerce. So once you keep that in mind, you stop forgetting or you start to forget the fact that WooCommerce is a separate plugin with different references. It's all doing the same thing. WordPress just considers it a custom post type, but a post nonetheless. So let's drag in the featured image, drag and drop that into our screen. And you can see that now pulls in that beanie. 
You can take a look on the left hand side and we have all the normal options for things like links, the alignment and so on. So I'm going to set up a few things in here, but like I say, this is entirely up to you how you do it. So we're going to say we want to use this centered. We're going to set the link to go to a custom URL. And from there, we're going to choose the dynamic option. And this allows us to specify exactly where clicking on this image will take us. Now, obviously, the ideal scenario is this is going to take us through to the actual product itself. So let's just do that. Click on the dynamic option and we're going to come down and say post URL. And this is why I want to emphasize the point that WordPress just looks at WooCommerce products as just another post. OK, so that now means that that's a link that will take us through to view the product if someone clicks on it. If we want to, we could then come in and do things like set styling up and on hover effect and so on. So let's do that. Let's set hover effect. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a CSS filter. So we're going to click and we're just going to say we want this to desaturate. So we have pretty much no color in it. So it just gives some visual feedback when the user mouses over this particular item. We'll set a transition duration then of about a half a second. So we'll have a nice slow transition between the colored image and the almost black and white image. Other than that, we're going to leave it as it is. So once we've done that, the next thing we can do is drop the next item in. So we're going to come down and we're just going to come in back to the widgets option. And from there, we're going to grab the post title. Drag and drop that into there. And you should find after a second. So there we go. Beanie with logo. We can then go through ahead and style that, that text if we want to. So we're just going to paste the style that I've already got on there. So there we go. So you can see that I've just aligned it to the center and so on. We'll change this from a H1 to a H2 because it's not as important. And we can set things up like, do we want to link it through to something? So you may want to set the name of the product to be a link as well. Well, you could do that just by clicking on the link option, clicking on dynamic and say post URL. So there's the first couple of options. Next, we're going to use another feature that's installed as part of Elemental Custom Skin. Going to come up to the widgets again. From here, we're going to come down and we're going to say that we want to pull in text editor. And drag and drop that underneath there. Click on the dynamic option again. And we have an option called post summary. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to take the product details, the information about the product, and then it's going to cut it down to a small bite sized piece. Now, you could, if you wanted to, use the post excerpt, but not everybody fills out the post excerpt. It's up to you how you want to work. You could use one or the other. I'm going to use the post summary and once you do that you can click on the little wrench icon to the left of that and we can set up how many characters or how many words we want to display at any particular time. 25 is perfect for this example because we don't have a huge amount of text in there but this is a great way of just giving a little bit of information about the product that someone's viewing and then let them make their mind up from there. So we leave that as is. All we're going to do is come over to the style and set that to be centered as well. Now the next thing we need to do is put in the price. Now to do that, we're going to say same again. We're going to come down to the text editor option. We drag and drop that underneath our brief information about our product. We're going to click to make sure that's active. And then we're going to come up to the dynamic option. And from there, we're going to come down, scroll right the way down through until we get to the WooCommerce options. And you can see from there, we've got the product title, the price and so on. So we're going to click on product price. And you see that that brings the price in. And again, we'll do the same thing again. So we'll style that, set that to be centered. And the final thing we're going to do is drop in the button to actually allow us to purchase this. So a couple of ways you could do that. We're going to come over to this and we're just going to type in basket in there. And you can see we've got add to basket. So you can drag that, drop that underneath. Again, we'll just set this to be centered. And we now have our key basic information pulled in. So this is the basics for that loop item. So with that in place, we can go through and we can set up any kind of styling we want to make sure that everything is configured the way we want it to. I'm not going to worry about that in this video. The styling is something I'm sure you can, you can sort that out yourself and get it to look exactly as you want. This is, like I say, more a case of how do things work. So let's hit publish on there. Now it says the normal thing where we deal with templates inside Elemental Pro, what's the condition you want to apply to this particular template? Well, because we're dealing with the loop and it doesn't really have anything to do with a specific template, we don't want to set any condition. We're going to leave that as is and we're just going to hit save and close. So with that in place, we've now created our loop sort of layout. So we're going to come out of this. We've finished with the loop option, exit to our dashboard. And the next thing we're going to do is come back into the theme builder. And from there, we're now going to create the archive that's going to display our custom layout for our products. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the archive section. Now we could do product archive if we wanted to. So you could do product archive. And from there, we're going to create our new archive. So we're going to say add new. Just put a name in for this. And we're going to call this default product archive. And hit create template. Now, if you've ever used the theme builder inside Elementor Pro, you'll know you normally go through and you have some options for just pulling in the archive. Let's click out of this template and just come into the page itself. So you'd normally use the archive products option. If we drag that into there, you'll see this pulls in the normal layout for our products. But we don't really have any control or anything. You can see the content, allow order, show result count and so on, jump over to advanced, it's just a search message. So we have no way of being able to pull in that custom loop layout. So what we're going to do is get rid of this. Now instead of using the products option, we're going to use the posts. So we're going to come up to the top, type posts in, and what we want is the posts widget. And drag and drop that over onto our page. Let's make a little bit of room for this now. So let's just put some padding at the top and the bottom. So we've got a bit of space there. Now, the reason we use this is because this allows us to create or use that custom loop. So if we select the posts, you can see the first thing we have under the layout option on the left hand side is classic for the skins. If we click to expand that, we've got custom. Click on custom and now it says, what do you want to use for your custom template? And click on there and we're going to use the default product loop, which is what I've just created. So we're going to click on that. And you can see that pulls in this information. Now, the query obviously is wrong because it's trying to pull in the information that's a normal post. So what we need to do is come down to the query section, click on there and change the source from being posts. And because we're dealing with products, we're going to come in and we're going to say products. Once we do that, you'll see that now pulls in the products. We've got all the options set up using the template that we've just created for our custom loop. So we can set up anything else we want. So for this example, we've got multiple different pages. So we're going to come in and we're going to say we want to have pagination. Click and add pagination in there. So we can now go through the various different pages for this particular product archive. And we've got everything set up. So that now allows us to use our custom loop. So we can hit publish on there. This time we're going to add a condition. And you see it says all product archives. And that's perfectly fine. We're dealing with the product archive. So we say save and close. So now all our products will use this layout. Now, if we want to make any changes to the way this looks, all we need to do is come back out of this, exit to our dashboard, and from there, come back into the theme builder. And what we're going to do is go into the loop, and we're going to open up that loop that we just created, which is the default product loop, and edit that with Elementor. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to put a border around this just so we had a nice separation. So we can simply click on the column, and from there, we can come to style, into border, set a border up in there. We'll say solid. We'll set a nice little light gray border on there. So we have some kind of styling. We'll set that to be one pixel across the board. And then we'll set it slightly different on the hover. So we'll say, again, we'll have solid. We'll set that to one pixel. But we'll set it to a darker color. So when someone hovers over it or mouses over it, they'll see this some kind of change. Hit update. Save and close because, again, like I say, we don't want to add any conditions to this. We'll say save and close on there. And now we can take a look and testing this out on the page itself. So we need to take a look at our shop page. You can see there's our custom loop, our custom layout. You can see when we mouse over, we get that slight change in the outline. All the details, the title, the image, which is clickable, the title of the product, the name of the product, which, again, is clickable. Add to basket, the quantity, all those different elements that we used inside our custom loop layout have all been pulled into this and allow us now to go through and select any product, add it to our basket, all the normal things you'd want to do. So click to a product, jumps over and takes us into the normal template, which we can customize. And like I say, already got videos on how you can customize these individual product pages, which I'll link in the description below so you can see how to do that as well. But that's it. That's how we can take Elemental Custom Skin. We can take Elemental Pro and we can use those together to create our own custom shop loop where we can control exactly how each of these different items looks, appears and operates. Well, hopefully this is something that's opened your eyes to how you can use these two plugins together and give you the ability to get a little bit more creative when it comes to creating WooCommerce based stores. You should no longer be stuck just by using the same old, same old layouts that are governed by the theme that you're using. 
Well, if you enjoyed the video, let me know any comments, questions, or feedback in the comment section below. All applicable links are in the description. My name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.